Hello everyone, I finally found some free time between moving and raiding and making those Korean raid guides and I'm finally back to making my discipline tips video for each of the mythic bosses. In this first video, I'm gonna cover some basic quick tips for the first three mythic bosses. And since these bosses are significantly easier than the rest of the mythic bosses and might even be easier than some of the later heroic bosses, I'm not gonna go over them in too much detail but and just discuss a few things that I felt while killing these bosses for the past 3 weeks. The first boss, Abyssal Commander Savar, is probably the hardest of these 3 bosses, especially to heal, because it's really unpredictable when the damage is going to come in. If you have really good raiders and they are really good at maintaining their stacks and dropping them when they're supposed to, rather than get hit by random abilities, it's really easy to plan out your ramps and evangelism timings to get the most out of the healing. However, if you are still progressing on this boss, I imagine that a lot of people are getting hit at times where you don't expect them to. If this is the case, I recommend that you use evangelism during the missiles because I found that after doing some heroic pugs that that's a time where people accidentally get hit by the wrong ability the most. Because there's constant damage coming out in this fight, I recommend not using your rapture at the same time as your evangelism since if not enough people reset at the time, a lot of the healing is going to go to overheal and using rapture separately with the radiance or two will probably net you a lot more healing. For talents, I recommend the usual talents with Sins of the Many and Purge the Wicked, but Shadow Covenant and Halo are also very good on this fight, so it really comes down to preference. Especially if you find people dying when, when they start taking damage unexpectedly, Shadow Covenant can be a lifesaver. And if your rate is constantly getting low, maybe you can even get pretty good uptime on Twist of Fate. Especially when things are messy, it's really hard to use barrier here. So you might be tempted to take Luminous Barrier, but because people have dots on them the entire fight, overall Evangelism is gonna net you just a lot more healing. The DPS check for this fight is actually really low, so you don't really need to use Cyclonic Blast Trinket, and you can opt to take Double Healing Trinket like Alchemist Stone, Luminous Jellyweed, or Deferred Sentence. For Essences, the major slot I would say Ever Rising Tide, if you're not having any mana problem, is probably the best. But Memory of Lucid Dreams is actually very solid here because you are constantly taking damage yourself as well and the leech can be significant amount of increase in your survival. For Minor, I would take Lucid Dreams if you haven't taken it as your major or if you did take it as your major, the Well of Existence is probably the next best essence. If you want to do more damage, you can always take Crucible instead. For Atonement usage, I would maintain it on the main tank and I would apply shields or shadow men to people who are soaking the debuff where you're supposed to stack. But otherwise, unless you have a lot of resources for mana, I would stay on low Atonement count until you need to use Radiances to heal. Make sure you wait for the knockback before drinking because it's very easy to think that nothing is going to happen only to realize that you get knocked back by one inch two seconds after you start drinking. If you find yourself struggling to keep people alive for this fight because people are taking random damage all the time, it might be a good idea to just play holy for this fight. Disc struggles to heal unexpected damage and while this is probably superior in most other instances, on a boss where the damage check is non-existent and the amount of damage that the raid takes is hard to predict, Holy definitely has a better time saving people's lives. The next boss, Radiance of Ajara, is probably the easiest boss in this instance, especially as a healer. Pretty much most of the time you only have 10 people that you need to heal, so it's very easy to maintain Atonement on almost everybody, even without evangelism. I personally would pick either Lenience or if you only care about HPS, Luminous Barrier is also very good. The best place to use Luminous Barrier is near the end of phase one when your group and the other group are getting close together. You can kind of move over a bit to make sure everyone's in range and hit Luminous Barrier right before the next explosion comes for big HPS. Make sure that everyone is topped off before the next raid AoE because it does about 70% of people's max health. And in the small chance that three debuffs land on your side, make sure you use mass dispel on top of your single dispel to make sure that all three are dispelled before they die. 
if somebody gets knocked off by a tornado, you can save them with your life grip. And for talents, I definitely recommend taking Purge the Wicked over Halo, since Halo is probably not going to hit everybody. And for Sins of the Many versus Shadow Covenant, you can take either. If you find that your side doesn't have enough healing to top everyone off before the next AoE comes, Shadow Covenant can definitely help. Twist of Fate pretty much always procs whenever this explosion happens as well, although Schism is probably still better. Once again, there's not really a damage check here, so you can take your healing trinkets, or if you want to just do more damage, you can always take the Mechagun trinket instead. For Essences, Ever Rising Tide is always good, especially since mana is not really an issue on this fight. And for Minor, Well of Existence or Memory of Lucid Dreams is always a solid option. The third boss, Blackwater Behemoth, is another fight where you're not going to get too much barrier value, but because pretty much half your raid has a hard ticking dot most of the fight, Evangelism will probably beat out Luminous Barrier. For the other talents, you can pretty much take anything you want. Both Purge of the Wicked and Halo are fine, same with Shadow Covenant and Sins of the Many. I would try to use your Evangelism whenever there's a Silk happening because people need to be topped off before that Silk happens. And it's very unlikely that anyone will be topped off if they have the debuff, so most of your healing is not going to go to overhealing. I don't recommend using your Rapture at the same time though because Rapture is best used when you are about to go pick up the second buff on each platform. People are likely to be immune to healing, and since everyone's going to get the buff, people are just gonna get zapped everywhere and die. So having a big shield to rapture on everybody will definitely save their lives long enough for them to be able to be healed by other healers. A good time to drink is when you get to the second platform while the DPS are killing the puffer fish, you can just sit there and drink. For trinket, again, you don't need DPS trinkets here, so I would recommend using Deferred Sentence or Luminous Jellyweed with an Alchemist Stone. And for essences, the usual Ever Rising Tide or Memory of Lucid Dreams for Major, and for minor, Well of Existence or Life Manager's Invocation. One major essence that you can consider here is Artifice of Time. With the Artifice of Time and a Pain Suppression, it should be enough damage reduction so that with just a personal cooldown, any class should be able to solo suck the laser beam. If you use Voice Stone Trinket, this will make it even easier to do so. It's not really necessary, but if you find that a lot of your raiders are having trouble navigating themselves in the 3D space to make sure that they're in the line, having some of your healers do this can definitely make it very easy to solo soak every single line. Try to prioritize using your shield even if the Tomek goes to waste if somebody's going to die before they get to the buff. It's really tempting to just heal everyone else, but you're pretty much the only healer that can save people from dying when they're about to get zapped from each other while getting the buff. This fight, because it's underwater, it's really annoying to heal, but it's not very difficult. So just focus on keeping as many people alive as long as possible and you'll be able to kill it pretty soon. One thing if you didn't know is that after you wipe, if you want to eat without having to swim all the way out, you can use the barnacle crusted gem toy that turns you into one of those Makura things and it will allow you to eat while underwater as long as you're touching the surface. These are some of the things I felt while killing these bosses for the past 3 weeks. And since these bosses aren't very difficult, more so than making sure that you're doing the maximum amount of healing and getting your ramps perfect, it's more important that you save the people who are in danger of dying and be a little bit more flexible with your CDs, even if a lot of it goes to overhealing. Thank you for watching and I'll be back with my discipline tips for Mythic Lady Ashvane where I'll be going much more in depth on the encounter and how to maximize your potential to the raid as a discipline priest. Then I'll see you guys on the next video.